Thank you so much for joining us for this special edition of CBN Newswatch. I'm Ephraim Graham. Ahead today, remembering a legend as CBN's founder, Dr. Pat Robertson, has gone home to be with the Lord. He founded the Christian Broadcasting Network more than 60 years ago and began the 700 Club. Now CBN has a global impact, leading untold numbers of people to salvation in Christ. With satellites and with the language translations and the things that we've had available, uh, we have probably seen more people come to the Lord through CBN than any other organization in the world. But it, it wasn't me, it was God. Pat also started Regent University and stood with Israel. And CBN ministered to the needs of millions in poverty around the world and helped people to recover after horrible natural disasters and so much more. We'll look back at the amazing life and legacy of Dr. Pat Robertson on this special edition of CBN Newswatch. This is CBN Newswatch. He was a broadcaster, educator, author, humanitarian, and most importantly, a minister of the gospel. Dr. Pat Robertson has died at the age of 93. The founder of the Christian Broadcasting Network, Pat Legacy, spans far beyond what you see on CBN programming. Here's a look back at the life of a man defined by his unshakable faith in God. John F. Kennedy was president when Pat Robertson, an ex-Marine and the son of a U.S. Senator, opened a bank account with $3 and created a broadcast network that would one day reach six continents. He has no money to speak of, and he decides the Lord wants him to have that station, and they wanted to sell it for $100,000, which is a lot of money now, a lot more back then. And when it was all said and done, Pat got it for free. So that means not only did he have faith, but he was a good negotiator, too. In 1966, he began hosting one of the longest-running programs in television history. And from the set of the 700 Club, Robertson transformed Christian television. Oh, we've got a wonderful audience and a wonderful program. Robertson once said he was a newsman at heart, and by the 1970s, he was interviewing military and political leaders, such as Israel's Prime Minister Yitzhak Rabin and Georgia Governor Jimmy Carter, who won the White House with the support of evangelicals. Four years later, he was part of the conservative leadership that helped Ronald Reagan capture the presidency. And by 1988, he was running for the presidency himself. He shattered the stained glass window. He shattered the glass ceiling and engage the process. And from that point on, I believe that people of faith were taken seriously beyond the church house into the White House. Robertson stunned the political world with his second place finish in the first in the nation Iowa caucuses. He lost the Republican nomination to George Herbert Walker Bush, but changed the face of American politics. When you think of Pat Robertson, I think the, one of the major lessons you learn is that if, if you have a dream, go after it, even if you fall short of it, to go after the presidency against all odds. Robertson expanded his political influence, bringing thousands of evangelicals into the process with the founding of the Christian Coalition. He also started the American Center for Law and Justice to protect religious freedoms. Pat has always had this vision to go where a lot of people don't go. And, you know, when you do that, sometimes you're criticized by people. He's been a risk taker in the best sense of the word, a visionary, a dreamer, but someone whose message was the gospel. Then, with his return to CBN, Robertson took the ministry global, dramatically extending Christian programming to 150 nations in more than 100 languages. With satellites and with the language translations and the things that we've had available, uh, we have probably seen more people come to the Lord through CBN than any other organization in the world. But it, it wasn't me, it was God. Robertson received both praise and heavy criticism for some of his political and social comments. But his humanitarian efforts didn't make as many headlines. Through Operation Blessing, he helped millions of poor and needy in every corner of the planet. The ministry has delivered more than a billion pounds of food to hungry Americans and assisted the victims of disasters such as Hurricane Katrina. All these homes represented dreams, represented vision, represented the hopes and aspirations of people, and it's all gone. 
The late Jack Hayford spoke of the ministry's deep and lasting effect. Just raw Christian compassion, always attended with a remembrance that we're being compassionate in order to show Jesus and the testimony of the cross. And that's been fairly low profile in his ministry in many people's minds, but it, globally it has been powerfully impacting. After the fall of the Berlin Wall in 1989, Robertson joined his friend, Billy Graham, to minister in the former communist countries. CBN started and supported thousands of churches from Central Europe to Ukraine and Russia. He made the most of opportunities in Asia as well, with broadcasting agreements and humanitarian outreach in China, a country close to his heart. And he helped other ministries, including Samaritan's Purse, a ministry in Africa started by Billy Graham's son, Franklin. Pat Robinson invested in other people uh, and other ministries. A lot of people don't do that. They focus on what they do, but they don't want to invest in anyone else. Pat invested in other people. Uh, he invested in, in my life, Samaritan's Purse. Well, let's put it this way. He was an investor. He invested in God's work. In the Middle East, he founded a television network that reached much of the Arabic world. And he stood with Israel even during times of war. No question. I, I was always impressed with Pat and uh, his boldness. And he did it in a nice way. And, uh, you know, he wasn't offensive, but he just spoke the truth. And that offended people. When you speak the truth, that offends people. But that's okay. One of his longest lasting legacies may be Regent University, producing leaders in government, law, the arts, and education. You know, one of the things that I appreciated about Pat Robertson was that Pat always had a sense of the world in mind. He had a sense that Christianity just didn't belong in the confines of the church but that it was to permeate all of life. And I think that's why uh, God even led him to uh, start Regent University. Pat served as chancellor of Regent, even after stepping down in 2021 as host of the 700 Club for 55 years. The following year, his beloved wife, Dee Dee, went home to be with the Lord. Despite losing the love of his life and suffering several health setbacks, Pat's faith, obedience, and love for God never wavered. What really makes him a giant is that he never pointed toward himself, but to the cross. At the heart of it all, his invitation to pray. Lord Jesus, right now, I confess to you that I'm not ready, Jesus. I surrender to you now, Lord, and I take you as my Lord and Savior. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Coming up, a look back at the amazing history of the ministry Pat Robertson founded more than 60 years ago, the Christian Broadcasting Network. That story is coming up next on this special edition of CBN Newswatch as we remember the life and legacy of Dr. Pat Robertson. CBN News Watch is a production of the Christian Broadcasting Network from the humble beginnings of a man with little more than a mission with Pat Robertson at the helm. CBN has grown into a global ministry. Broadcasting more than 60 years, the work of CBN has impacted hundreds of millions around the world. Take a look. CBN, the Christian Broadcasting Network, presents the following program. On October 1st, 1961, Pat Robertson, a Bible in hand, stepped in front of a television camera for the first time. While that inaugural broadcast barely made it around the block, it was all part of the plan to spread the gospel around the world through the art and science of television. And I wanted to be part of God's plan, and I think that His plan is for world evangelization and to bring millions to the kingdom, and He's let me be part of it. By any standard, his work in and through television has been incredible. As Pat emerged as a media innovator, cultural influencer and spiritual leader, and mentor to people all over the world, Franklin Graham puts things in perspective. There's Holy Spirit-filled power in the gospel message. And of course, uh, this network of Pat's life uh, has touched so many millions of people with this power of God, the gospel 
of the Lord Jesus Christ that has transformed and changed lives by the millions. And I just thank God for his life and for his ministry. A television pioneer in his own right, Pat was always an early adapter, using the latest broadcast and television technologies to get CBN's flagship show, The 700 Club, to viewers everywhere. From cable to satellite, and now the internet. The show and the gospel are accessible to practically every person on the planet. Also under Pat's leadership, the 700 Club has taken many forms, using indigenous hosts and programming to reach people through their culture and in their native language. CBN has also produced films, a 24-hour online news channel, and of course, the enormously popular children's animated series, Superbook, that started in 1981 and was reimagined in 2009. That's a whole lot better than my magic card shuffle. Pat's influence in the secular world is also remarkable. Through thoughtful commentary and by engaging political and cultural leaders, he's given voice to Christian thought and views on the social and political issues facing our world. To join hearts and voices in prayer for peace in the Middle East. A balanced budget. We are not enemies of China. We are not enemies of the Russians. We have more energy than any other country in the world. Rob Allman, Vice President of CBN News. I think Pat's contribution to religious broadcasting is that he took religious broadcasting into the mainstream. If you are reproached for being Christ's followers, that's a great privilege. As they avoid, in my opinion, stories that go against powers that be, whether they're political interests or sometimes special interests or corporate interests. Pat Robertson is simply a pioneer and a visionary. General Clark, what do you learn when you're on the ground? Is Putin trying to uh, stir up something to have a wider war? Well, he's definitely putting the framework in place to, to use military power again. But he has military means, he has economic means, and he has political means to try to hurt Ukraine. Also, to Pat's credit, his efforts to break down racial barriers in the TV industry, American culture, and the church. In fact, Ben Kenchlow, Pat's longtime co-host and friend, was the first African-American to co-host a daily TV show. Now deceased, Ben had this to say about his 20 years working alongside Pat. We had the matchless privilege of being a part of what God was doing, and I could stand by Pat Robertson's side and hold up his hand and, and pray with him and, you know, cry with him and laugh with him and see God do incredible things for people. Which brings us back to the plan, a plan that for 60 years has seen millions around the world find hope, healing, and salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. Uh, we have probably seen more people come to the Lord through CBN than any other organization in the world. But it, it wasn't me, it was God. So he gets the glory, but it's amazing. It is simply amazing how many millions of people have come to Jesus. Amazing indeed. Still ahead, we're going to talk with these key veteran members of the CBN News team about their experiences with Dr. Robertson and the amazing things they've seen in working with him over the years. We'll have those interviews for you right after this. Stay with us. A major part of Pat Robertson's life and legacy is CBN News. And here with me are three longtime veterans of CBN News, our financial and tech technological editor, Drew Parkhill, senior international correspondent, George Thomas, and chief international correspondent, Gary Lane. So, Drew, let's start with you. Tell us about your history with Pat. Well, Ephraim, it is a long history. I started in 1980. <laughs> in October of 1980, and I ended up in the guest department, and then after a few years, Pat said, what's he doing in the guest department? Transfer him into news. And I did all kinds of things, and eventually ended up producing news on the 700 Club with Pat for many, 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 <laughs> over 30 years. And I would call him in the morning and tell him what was going on, and sometimes he would say, oh, that can't be. I'd say, I'm serious, it's true. I double-checked it and so forth. But it was interesting. One, one of the important things, <laughs> Gary's laughing because he knows it's true. <laughs> One of the interesting things about Pat, and there are many, is mm -hmm. the Pat Robertson you saw on the air was Pat Robertson. Yeah. You know, that was him. And what was really impressive was his widespread depth of knowledge. I remember sitting there listening to him talking sometimes, and I would think, boy, oh boy, you may or may not agree with him, but he knows his stuff. Mm -hmm. And he was also really good if he would say, I want so-and-so on the show, um, I want to talk about such-and-such. He would let the guest do the talking. He didn't try to over 
to steamroll over him. He wanted to hear what they had to say because he felt like that was important. Mm -hmm. So his amazing accomplishments were reflected as well on the show and right here in CBN News, which is just been an incredible organization. Indeed, indeed. George, you've traveled to many of our international offices around the world. What's been the impact of those offices on countries? Yeah, I mean, this was the love that he had. He had this, you know, not only the love for the United States of America, but he realized that this gospel of Jesus Christ had to be taken literally around the world. And that's what he did by launching the so-called world reach offices uh, around the globe, whether it's from Beijing to Nairobi to Jakarta, Indonesia, to Hyderabad, India, it was this idea that the gospel had to go forth and you know, not just the the international, the U.S. version of the 700 Club, which for many, many years, uh, you know, was translated into so many different languages. He realized that we had to have indigenous programs in these various countries. And so this idea of creating sort of mini CBNs around the world, but that didn't have white hosts, had African hosts, had Indian hosts, had Arabic hosts. That was his passion, this idea that the gospel of Jesus Christ has to be communicate and this is one of my one of my most favorite moments when we had a chance to go to New Delhi and we were on the verge of launching this major outreach to reach the un, the so-called untouchables of India the Dalits the lowest of the lowest this was Pat's heart to take the gospel that everybody should have a chance to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ and CBN as he mentioned in that piece was at the forefront around the world to bringing people into the kingdom of God. Gary, that brings me to you. What have been some of your memorable experiences? I have many over 39 years, but what people don't realize is I think South Sudan is a country today because of Pat Robertson. And, and you wonder, okay, why are you saying that? Well, I'm saying that because he sent me there. I traveled in uh, over a 10-year period about 20 times into South Sudan. At that time, it was Sudan, and it raised awareness. Uh, he was so committed to the people there. He wanted us to bring relief to them. Uh, he also wanted to uh, see them as an independent country. And what happened, it put pressure on the uh, George Bush administration, George Bush uh, the second one mm -hmm. at that time. And uh, he appointed a special envoy, and the envoy was there and, and uh, negotiated a peace agreement and an election where the people voted a, on, in a referendum to become an independent country. And that's because Pat Robertson was committed to the people of Sudan, and he wanted to see them independent, and he uh, led the uh, American church in that. Mm -hmm. He did. He led the American church, and that country, I believe, mm -hmm. uh, is uh, free today because of that. Amen. Because Amen. of him. Amen. All of you, before we let you go, what are some of your fondest memories of Pat? I think, you know, George was talking about traveling with Pat and Gary was talking about Pat's activities. And you saw earlier a video of me, Pat interviewing me mm -hmm. uh, on, on the uh, club about financial markets. Pat would listen to his people. What do you think? What are you hearing? What do you know? Mm -hmm. And he's very good about that. But there are a couple other things that are very important that people don't see. Mm -hmm. Okay, one was how he did care for his employees here. He would do things for them that nobody would know about, people wouldn't find out about, but he did them for them. Mm -hmm. And another great thing was his sense of humor, which we would see <laughs> behind the scenes, but you could... <laughs> There's no way we have time to go into these stories, but I could tell you some of the you know, funniest stories with Pat, and he would just have this laugh and this smile. You would really see it on the air with Ben Kinchlow. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. but um, he was just so great about that, and I'm telling you, it's, it's going to be a tough day for a lot of people. His yeah. family and the employees yeah. here is a tough day. Tough indeed. day for us. Yeah, indeed. Indeed. Yeah, sure. indeed. indeed. George? Yeah, I think one of my most precious moments was in New Delhi where he was about to preach to a crowd of about a half a million people. And I was putting on one of these, these microphones right before he was getting up on stage. And as I'm putting the microphone on his, uh, on his jacket, uh, he says, will you pray for me? Mm. He says, I'm nervous. And I was thinking, wait a minute, Pat Robinson's nervous? Mm. And he was, because he just was, he was thrilled about this moment to preach the gospel. And, and this is also one of those memories where he was so happy being there, he loved being out outside of the U.S., going and you know, and touching people, hugging people, delivering food and urgent supplies to people in difficult, difficult situations. And that was his love. He had a love for the world because of what he did, what he, what the Lord meant to him in his life. 
Gary, real quick. Well, just quickly, uh, the Berlin Wall. I had the privilege of producing that piece where he was with Billy Graham walking along the wall. And both of them gazed into East Germany and said, we're claiming that for Jesus. And he did. And as a result of his effort there, and Billy Graham as well, millions of people in those former communist countries mm -hmm. are in the kingdom today. All right. Thank you, gentlemen. Appreciate it. Thank you, Drew Parkhill, George Thomas, and Gary Lane. Much appreciated. Coming up. What Pat himself said was the key to his amazing Christian life. We're going to hear what he had to say when we come back. Stay with us. Well done, good and faithful servant. Words we all long to hear at the end of our lives. While well, Pat's servanthood brought him recognition throughout his life, as he told CBN's Scott Ross upon the release of his last memoir, it was all for the glory of God. One little final thing. Yes, sir. God entrusted you with a lot. Yes. But he also trusted you, and you haven't failed him. Well, I've tried. You have I've not. Failed. You are sitting here, and there's, the, unfortunately, so many men get to that l level. They do, not, not many. But they, he, you didn't fail him. Well done, good and faithful servant. Well, the secret, Scott, is to realize you're nothing. And every day I tell the Lord and I tell myself that I'm nothing. And he said, having done all these things, say we're unprofitable servants, we've yeah. done our duty. And so I look around and this is a wonderful university and CBN is leading millions of people to the Lord and Operation Blessing is feeding all these people and the ACLJ is fighting for liberty and all this stuff. But the big thing is I give him glory. Amen. Now Pat has entered into the joy of his Lord and many in heaven who were blessed through his ministry are also welcoming him. Before we say goodbye, I'd like to leave you with today's Thursday thankful, a prayer of gratitude. And today it is this, God, thank you for the life of Dr. Pat Robertson and thank you for his obedience. His heart and the work of his hands is what vision looks like. Thank you so much for his great life. I grew up watching the 700 Club. Never did I ever imagine I'd be here delivering the news here at CBN News. And I'm grateful because of that and for the life of Dr. Pat Robertson. Well, that is going to do it for this edition of CBN News Watch. We thank you so much for joining us. I want to remind you, you can always find more of our news programs on the CBN News Channel. You can find them there anytime as well as online. That's CBNNews.com. We'd love to know what you think about the stories you've seen here today or any day. You can do so by emailing us. The address is newswatch at cbn.com. You can also reach out and touch us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We certainly would love to hear from you. We thank you for joining us. Join us right back here, same time tomorrow. Goodbye and God bless.